By the beginning of the 20th century, horses were arguably the most important animals in our society, as pack animals and as our main mode of transportation. But lately, most of us have seen less and less of these proud animals. In our next story, we'll meet a woman who reminds us of the spirit and intelligence of the noble horse and the ways in which animals can change our lives for the better. Nestled in the sunny Okanagan Valley in Canada is a little piece of paradise called God's Little Acre. This is home to Phyllis Olson, a few adopted cats, and her longtime friend, an extraordinary horse called Shagra, who doesn't really know he's a horse. He's an amazing animal. He, he amazes me every day, and I live with him. He's, he's totally incredible. <laughs> Good for you. He does people things because he's spending half his time hanging in the kitchen window and I do something, so he does it. Like he helps me cook, turns the light on, opens the window, cupboard, yeah, he's busy. <laughs> Shagra has a mind of his own. To this day, he has no intention of being a horse. Last time I rode him, he bucked me off. You can smile, that's good. The things that Shagra does, I guess you call them tricks, I don't, but they're not. He does it out of love, he mimics me. He sees me doing it and he wants to do it. But life hadn't always been filled with love for Phyllis and Shagra. Phyllis had fled an abusive home environment. I ran away from home because things just were right. Then I just met the wrong people and ended up down on the streets. And from there, everything that could happen to a woman happened to me, Every, everything wrong. And it, it just didn't seem fair. I got married, divorced, I lost my kids. I was in jail quite a few times, and, and when I was in there, I had professionals try and help me because I hid behind drinking. I, I just, it would make me a totally different person. I was really actually a good person. I knew that inside. While in jail, Phyllis was allowed out on a day pass. She met a cowboy who told her about a three-year-old stallion named Charlie Brown. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, Phyllis and Shagra. Charlie Brown, soon to be named Shagra, had not been treated kindly, and Phyllis couldn't get the image of his face out of her mind. <laughs> All I could think about was this little Arab stallion named Charlie Brown. And I walked in the barn where he's being held, and there was this skinny little horse in this little box all with the biggest, saddest brown eyes I've ever seen in my life. When we were taking him to load him into the horse trailer, that little horse was just about running to get there. Phyllis filled her days nursing Shagra back to health. She was so busy looking after the little horse, she didn't notice that a wonderful transformation was taking place within herself. We moved to a cabin, and that's the first time I lived with Shagra. And I loved him, trying to heal him. And my aunt told me, Phyllis Ann, she says, do you know you haven't been drinking for three months? I never even noticed, I never noticed. And through loving Shagra and Shagra loving me, I just moved right away from it. Oh, there's the phone, Shagra. Get the phone. I'm getting the phone. As the bond between horse and human grew stronger, Shagra just wanted a room that was a little closer to Phyllis. When we first moved here, Shagra used to live in the hay shed outside. And then he used to start visiting, hanging under the window, so I got someone to build him a roof. Then pretty soon, next thing I know, he's got four walls and a window. He's moved right in. Phyllis and Shagra were becoming inseparable, a strong bond growing between them. One night at dinner time, Phyllis noticed Shagra trying to imitate her. Shagra, supper time. Well, the way he started flapping is I would feed him his mash in his stall, and he, he's such a pig when he eats. And so I was teasing him one day. I was smacking my lips, looking at him. And he looked at me, and he reached over to see if I was eating anything, and I wasn't. And he started mimicking me with his lips. Show him what you do. Flip, flip, flip. Can't do that. Well, then do it. A little bit. No, no treats. Smile. 
Thank you. <laughs> Phyllis realized she had a pretty smart horse on her hands, and she began to use hand signals to teach him to smile and sing. How many gentle flowers grow in an English country garden? I'll tell you now of some that I know and those I miss, I hope you'll pardon. Daffodils, hot season flocks, meadow sweet and lily stalks in an English country garden. He entertains me all the time, and he, he makes me laugh, you know, and I truly, truly believe Shaggy's a gift from God. And then I often say to myself, gee, God sure must have a good sense of humor, yeah, but, but he sent me Shagra, I know he did, and Shagra gave me the love and changed my life. Phyllis takes in a few stray cats that make their way to her door. She gives them tender, loving care and finds homes for them, and the cats feel right at home with Shagra comfortable enough to hop on for a ride and a bit of sun. When Shag was standing outside waiting for his supper or breakfast, my little cats go out the window and they sit on him. He don't mind a bit. They just love him and he just puts up with them. We're a family and it's a pretty nice family. I know I have a purpose here and I know God gave me Shagra to fulfill that purpose. And what I really think it is, is to show people how to respect animals and how animals can help you and, and learn to love. You're like a fairy tale come true. I spent a lifetime searching for you. I was looking for love, and love led me to you. He makes people laugh. And the harder you laugh and the more applause he gets, the better he loves it. Oh, he's a real hound. I needed a friend till I found you. I was looking for love. And love led me to you. Love led me to you. I was looking for love. And love led me to you. God gave me Shagra. I know he did because there's nothing like that on this earth. He's very special. He's amazing. He's got to be a gift. Next.